time. There's a lot of planning. And you need somebody who knows you who is not going to get offended by something that you say or do in the moment and just look at you and say, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And actually, so I want to go back to the cost for a second, because I think that when it comes to the cost for the maid of honor, I think there are certain places where and and a lot of times it even depends on either cultural norms or regional norms, what's typical for your area. So things differ. But for the most part, I think that, yes. The maid of honor does have a bigger financial burden than the rest of the bridal party. And that's just because there's a lot of things I feel like as the maid of honor, you should just anticipate picking that up just to make sure that it gets done. And essentially, you have to plan ahead of time. What exactly are you budgeting for and what do you think is going to be reasonable? So then it also differs if if you're going to be involved in helping to plan the shower as well as the bachelorette party. That changes things because if you're only responsible for the bachelorette money, the bachelorette party, the bulk of your budget can go towards helping to pay for that. Mm -hmm. But if you're responsible for both the shower and the bachelorette party, I mean, a a shower is expensive. It's It's thousands of dollars. It is. When you have food and you have the decorations and the linens. And I I had every um, thought that I was going to be paying for the shower just because I didn't think my parents were going to be able to swing it. So mm-hmm. I went into that with, okay, this is going to be put on my credit card. My sisters would probably like chip in and like we could half it up or whatever. But when we, when we went and looked at the place with my parents, they put the deposit down on the place. And then when the bill came that day, they took it. So I was like, all right. So I, I, and my sister, my old, my sisters helped. My other sisters helped with the bachelorette. So like I did spend probably more, but we all eventually kind of, bear the cost. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit different because you have multiple sisters. So right. for Christy and I, it's just Christy and I. And then also for women who don't have sisters. So one of my best friends, when she got married, she actually didn't choose maid of honor, um, which I have thoughts on that as which well. We'll get to, I think. Yeah. Well, I just think if, if you don't choose a maid of honor, I think it's more stressful for the bridal party because they don't technically have a quote unquote leader if it's not all a family. So there's no natural leader or that person has to emerge instead of you just saying, and you can even pick two maids of honor to have them split it. But it's really hard when you don't have that person to lead things. Yeah. And in that instance, that was kind of tough because I took charge but I'm also that person who is very controlling and was like nope there's nobody here to do this so let me take control of this but also I wasn't too familiar friendly with some of the other bridesmaids so then you have to familiarize yourself with them you don't really know them very well you can't say oh I need a thousand dollars for this shower um and then it's trying to coordinate all those things and what ended up occurring was that I was responsible for the bachelorette party and um, another woman, she handled the shower. She planned the shower. So I assisted a little bit, but then also that is something else that we'll get into. The mother of the bride really wasn't involved in the bridal shower and that differs. And so you have to be prepared for these situations where if I had all three, it was there's no actual maid of honor. The mom is not really involved in the planning. What do you do then? Well, yes. And then especially when you want to make it nice. And if you don't have all the money and not as much help when it comes to other people chipping in on the cost of things, it gets to be a little bit stressful for either a bridesmaid or the or the maid of honor. But I mean, I I, once again, then I think it comes down to uh, upfront communication, especially on the bride's part. If she knows that that's the case that, hey, my mom isn't going to be as involved or, hey, it's not typical that my family throws the shower. Typically, it's the bridesmaid or the friends. So it depends. Yeah, that's a really good recommendation for brides that have those kinds of choices, because in my instance, that didn't happen. It's not as if the bride, my friend, came to us and said, my mom's not going to be super involved. But her mother also didn't step up and say that. Um, and financially speaking, you know, also those like random little costs, like leading up to your wedding, Christy, it was chilly. And so I just ordered a bunch of pashminas for all the girls because I didn't want them to get cold. So like just kind of being prepared for those little things. So it might not be like a huge upfront cost, but being prepared for those little little things yeah and like so for the bachelor party we have coming up for kim the way that it's set up with the rooms and stuff 
where the room that we're getting will have less people in it, but we got the bigger room. So I'm just anticipating paying the cost for that this way because I, but that's a personal decision I made. So I, it's not something I had to do. It's just a personal decision I made because I budgeted it in that that's something that I'm going to do this way. It's easier when we're there in terms of everybody meeting up and getting together and having the space to do that. That's not just in the middle of a lobby or something. Right. Right. Just to go back to what Kim was saying about those little costs. That's where I felt like when it was like crunch time, I'm talking like two, three months out, more Mm -hmm. like two months out from the wedding. That's when I was starting to feel it because I was like buying all these little things like, oh, I got to make sure I have this and then I'm going to make sure I have this. And then there's the speech and then there's that. Like in terms of cost, though, there was like a lot leading up to the wedding. Mm -hmm. I said two months in. Yeah, I would I would agree just because then you're starting to think about oh, we're going to need this or, oh, we're going to need that. And also, I just want to throw out there, decorations are way overpriced. I don't know. If oh, you yeah. Are. Have you ever It's insane. Even Oriental Trading, they break it down per <laughs> unit. But I mean, really, that's still very expensive when you only sell it in a case of 350. <laughs> I mean, when you're going on a bachelor with five girls, obviously you need 350 stars. <laughs> Um, But I also think that people's expectations over time have gotten ridiculous in terms of what they're expecting. You mean $1,500? Yes. I'm not sure if our listeners out there have gotten the chance to see the thing that went viral with the bride from Canada that was expecting all of her guests contribute $1,500, which is an absurd. As a gift? Yeah. No, no, no. As a to go to their wedding. Like, so they sent the RSVP cards in. And then when you... When you sent in your RSVP card, you had to send a check for $1,500 to go to the exclusive event. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) And then her maid of honor had originally pledged $5,000. Pledging. She pledged (laughs) $5,000. It's a -a wedding-a-thon. And when the maid of honor said, actually, you know what? I don't think I can do this. The bride then said, that is my money. My money that was promised to me. She was trying to get and she didn't want to give back other like bridesmaids deposits because she said that it needed to pay for the emotional distress. <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. This is in Canada. Yeah, I'll have to show it to yeah. you later. And I'll typically include- all maple syrup and honey and squish. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was all sweet up there. <laughs> I'll include the link as well to or the screenshots as well on the website just because it's so funny. But it's I think that people's expectations with Pinterest and how. It creates just over the top vision of things. But Pinterest has come in so handy. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's good. And Etsy? Yeah. What did people do before Etsy when it comes to little trinkets for bachelorettes and showers? I have no idea. I use that so much. Yeah, no, Etsy is good. I mean, it's good until you want a specific set of pajamas for your bridesmaids and you're trying to look and everything is not right but i will agree so you're mad at the etsy people for not having the pajamas you want yes pretty much (laughs) (laughs) um but i will say it's you also have to have that conversation in terms of making sure that you reach out to the bride and say i know that you want me to be your maid of honor this is great this is you know There might be a lot of financial components that I need to take on, but I need to be honest with you in terms of like what my expectations are and what your expectations are. And it kind of goes back to that conversation. I mean, at the time that you got married, Christy, I just moved back to Pennsylvania to live with mom and dad and save money. So I I look back and I think to myself, I still feel I didn't do enough. Oh, Um, no, you did plenty. No, I I, I think that's a personal thing, though. My expectation. Well, this is another lesson to everybody. And I do this on a regular basis. If you set your expectations low, (laughs) you're always going to be happy (laughs) because my expectations are so low to begin with (laughs) that I'm always pleasantly surprised. (laughs) Good way to go through life. I know. It really is because you're never going to be disappointed. (laughs) But no, looking back, I mean, even still, like, Making sure that I booked the full swamp tour for everybody, (laughs) Um, you know, making sure that the shirts were done. And then, um, but yeah, just understanding that 
where you have to recognize what your financial status is and be honest with that. You can't overextend yourself if you truly can't do it. Oh, yeah. So I think what it comes, I personally think what it comes down to is I do think as a maid of honor, you do need to expect and anticipate that you will be picking up the tab for various things and that you are going to be the one that will have to pick up that tab. However, it's all within reason. I mean, I'm not saying like go crazy. I'm just saying that you need to be prepared, but it also needs to be within reason. Right. No, I agree. Well, another part of the shower maid of honor duty is that you have to be the scribe. You have to write down the gifts that the people got, make a list, and then maybe even prepare or at least have thank you notes to give to the bride to use. I, You know what? I delegated that task to my niece, Lauren. Mm -hmm. So before the shower, I already bought her the thank you cards and I pre-labeled all the envelopes. Mm -hmm. So, And I brought post-it notes. So all we had to do was is write down the gift and attach the post-it note to the card. And it was a very easy thing for her to fill out. Which works in theory in most situations. Except except in mine. Because that is exactly what I did. I got beautiful envelopes for my sister. I got thank you notes. I set everything up. Each one had a post-it note on it. And then I asked, um, our other bridesmaid sitting right next to me, Carrie, to, um, I said, Carrie, I'm going to write down the gift. Can you please make the bouquet or the hat for Christy? Um, oh, to- that's another responsibility at the shower <laughs> to make a hat of bows. <laughs> so not only did I create a really fun drinking game for everybody, which I was keeping track of, um, I was like, let me handle these gifts. And I said, Carrie, can you make this hat? Carrie seemed a little stressed about having to make um, a hat out of ribbons and a paper plate. And she then looked at me and said, I'll write down the gift. And I said, Care, I, you know, I'll do it because I know everybody. And she's like, I got it. And then during the drinking game, during the drinking game, um, which she was still drinking, where Christy opens the gifts, the drinking game. Yeah. And so every time like somebody said, ooh, get a drink. Get a drink. Anytime you said, oh, I really wanted that. You had a That's drink. how come you tried to steal a gourd from outside? <laughs> well, what ends up happening is you have post-it notes not not are really on something, and then somebody who says Aunt L or whatever. Some people got the wrong thank you card. Well, we don't want to place blame. <laughs> um, but I would just advise you that if you're gonna have somebody else other than yourself. Something that you guys were never going to bring to my attention? No, I thought that we already did bring it to your attention. We did. Were you drunk when we told you about it? (laughs) Well, regardless, if you're going to, if you're going to, you know, I think it's really nice to set it up, to have the envelopes, to have all this set up for the bride, makes it really easy. Just send them on out. Just making sure if you're going to put the labels with everybody's name who's attending the shower and putting it all nice and fancy, make sure that the post-it notes go in the right place and you have the right person writing them down who's not drinking Pinot Grigio. <laughs> well, just make sure that what they're drinking anything else. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's fast forward now. So everything has been done and, and you have been there for the bride and you have made it to wedding day or the day of the rehearsal dinner. You, dun, made it. Dun, dun. <laughs> you made it. You're in the home stretch is what I'm trying to say. So uh, in terms of your responsibilities on the day of the wedding, this is where there is some that are just there. It, you could have a checklist. It's not going to vary as much. These are going to be your responsibilities. So making sure that you have the itinerary for the day from the bride, making sure that you have all the contact information for the vendors. This way, the bride doesn't have to worry about it on the day of. Why are you shaking your head? You don't agree? I didn't have any of this. Michelle ran the show. I mean, I was there, I feel, for... That's why my situation is so unique. I was there for, like, moral support. Like like Kim was saying earlier, if she wanted something to eat, I'd go and get that for her. Something to drink, something specific. This little, little, little things. When it came to vendors, I had no idea. Oh. I had no idea. Okay, well, so That's you're- actually true because short of the florist for your wedding... That's all that I really knew. No, I sent you the vendor information and I sent you a complete timeline to have. I sent it to the entire well, bridal no, party I did, to refer back to. No, I did have that. I did. I, I feel like I did have that. But I, I guess it's just that I didn't like go up to other other than the florist and handling no, the liquor at the end of the night. No, you didn't. You don't have to do anything with that information unless the person's missing. Oh, I see what you're getting at. To okay. have it just in case. This way the bride isn't the one on the phone making sure that the... Photo booth is no, that's up. true. That's true. But I still didn't have it. Michelle also had a wedding planner. So 
that at the actual, you know, reception hall. So she kind of took over a lot of things. Well, there you go. Yeah. But, you know, These situations are different. They are. Yeah. They're very, very different. I mean, I I went in with the expectation that like Michelle was going to she was going to run the show and you, she was going to tell me where she would she needs me where I felt like my main responsibility was. I mean, I was so friggin nervous that day between the speech and just like I was just sweating. <laughs> did you get <laughs> like, did you not enjoy the day? <laughs> did you get clinical strength antiperspirant? <laughs> I was just there was so many moving parts. You know the day of yeah, it's like it's so crazy. many moving parts. And knowing that you're the maid of honor, 